The equipment covered in this presentation should be installed, used, and serviced only by competent personnel familiar with and following good work and safety practices. This equipment is for use by such personnel and is not intended as a substitute for adequate training and experience in safe procedures for this type of equipment. These instructions do not cover all details or situations in equipment use nor do they provide for every possible contingency to be encountered in relation to installation, operation, or maintenance. For additional information and details, or for specific situations not covered adequately for the user's purpose, refer the specifics to the A.B. Chance Company. Before beginning this procedure, obtain a hotline hold order. This precaution places the automatic recloser in a manual position. That setting defeats the recloser from automatically re-energizing the line if any adverse condition should cause the recloser to operate. Next, lay out the tools to be used on a tarp and a tool rack. Wipe all the tools with a silicone impregnated cloth. Hold a tailgate conference to make sure each crew member understands the complete procedure. Once work begins, no changes in the procedure should be made unless the entire crew completely comprehends each change beforehand. Remember, refer to OSHA regulations for hot stick clearances. First, hang the hand line on the cross arm using a tie stick. Then, also with the tie stick, install the tool hanger on the cross arm. The ground crew now secures a rope snubbing bracket on the pole, approximately four feet above the ground. Float the neutral out of the work area. ground men may need to use a straight line to secure the neutral out of the work area. Put on the three insulator covers, one phase at a time. Put on the six conductor covers, one phase at a time. Approximately six inches below the cross arm braces, mount the top saddle with extension. Make sure the clevis on the saddle points down. Into the saddle, insert the mast pole, making sure the butt swivel is up. Mount the bottom saddle approximately six inches below the mast pole splice. Wearing rubber gloves, install the auxiliary arm on the mast pole. Attach the two brace poles to the auxiliary arm. The braces are pinned to the pole clevis on the mast pole. Hang a set of blocks in the clevis of the top saddle. Hanging the blocks on the top saddle rather than the bottom saddle will let you raise the conductors approximately two feet higher, as you'll see in later steps. Attach the blocks to a sling clamped in the base of the mast pole. On the auxiliary arm side, 
pull the conductor covers back approximately 30 inches from the insulator covers. Take up just enough strain on the blocks to make the wire holders lift all three phases approximately two inches. You need to do this so the phases will float or raise clear of the insulators when the tie wires are removed later. Make sure the wire holder latches are closed on all three phases. The groundmen tie off the block fall line to the rope snubbing bracket. Remove all three insulator covers. Place a cross arm guard on one outside phase. On that outside phase, cut the tie wire on both sides of the insulator. Next, move the cross arm guard to the center phase and cover the pole top and the exposed section of the cross arm. Then cut the tie wire from both sides of this insulator. Finally, move the cross arm guard to the other outside phase and cut its tie wire again on both sides of the insulator. Now take up enough tension on the blocks to raise the phases approximately three feet above the cross arm. And tie off the blocks to the rope snubbing bracket. Remove the tie wires from all three phases, one phase at a time. Now you can change out either the insulators or the cross arm, whichever was the assignment on this job. After you've replaced the insulators or cross arm, reinstall the cross arm guard and pole covers as needed. Then lower the auxiliary arm until the phases are approximately six inches above the insulators. Put the rubber sleeves of the tie wire sets on each conductor. Now lower the auxiliary arm until the phases are seated on the insulators. Pull the auxiliary arm down about two inches and tighten the top saddle. This holds the phases in place while you apply the tie wires. Replace the cross arm guard and pole covers as needed to tie in the other two phases. Loosen the top saddle and raise the auxiliary arm so you can open the latches with a tie stick. Now lower the auxiliary arm until it rests on the top saddle. Remove the cross arm guard and pole covers.
put on the three insulator covers. Slide the six conductor covers back into place. Remove the blocks. Then remove the two braces. Next, wearing rubber gloves, remove the auxiliary arm. Then take down the mast pole. And remove the saddles. Now you can take off the conductor covers and the insulator covers. With a tie stick, remove the cross arm tool hanger. Again, using the tie stick, take the hand line off the cross arm and hang it at the neutral level. Replace the neutral and its clevis. Lower the hand line to the ground and the job is completed. Properly cared for, these same hotline tools can help you safely perform many construction and maintenance jobs on energized circuits. This presentation has shown you the fundamentals for just one of those procedures, changing out insulators or cross arm with the auxiliary arm method. For techniques specific to other jobs, see similar presentations in this series. <laughs>